Well, now that the draft is gone and forgotten about and uh, waiting for the season to begin in terms of the OTAs and training camp and stuff, hopefully it takes place. Um, I haven't gotten to the point of talking about our free agents, veteran free agents that were signed before the seasons, before all this started. And so I think, to my point, I want to I want an answer to that and, and, and name them briefly in each name to tell you why the Cowboys make good deals uh, re uh, signing people to the Cowboys and even a couple of re-signings that are very important to us. Hello, I'm Cowboy Legends for Life coming back at you again with another video that my hopes that you like the last one. And um, let's get started with this. I want to start from the top of the, top of the names that I want to wrote down here. It's Aha Clinton Dix. Aha Clinton, Aha Clinton Dix is a pretty good pickup for at this point right now. Uh, it may, it just for this year. In fact, I would consider um, having him a one-year deal for the Cowboys instead of a two-year deal that I was talking about before because and uh, we don't know how strong he would be, but he's a very good, crafty veteran out there knowing exactly how to play the uh, receivers. Him coming back there to help stabilize the, that uh, backfield is a smart thing. And so he's, he's signed with the Cowboys. Number two is Don Terry Poe. Good signing, okay? Don Terry Poe is a uh, defensive tackle, and he's a, he's a guy who plugs up, the, plugs up the middle. Matter of fact, they call him a run stuffer. And, and that's a good thing to have. He's a big guy, man. So we needed someone like that. That as people were talking about, like Mark Holmes, such as Mark Holmes, talking about trash can full of dirt. We need up the middle to stop that shit. We, like I said, I can't stress it to everybody enough who are Cowboy fans. We got killed with the run game. Killed up the middle. I mean, murdered the entire season. That's good. So we have him, this kid. He's Dante Poe is not, 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 matter of fact, he's a pretty good age. So we want to, we want to stay with him. All right. And now we got also Gerald McCoy, a defensive tackle. Another one. And this is key because we lost Collins, um, Malik Collins. We lost, um, uh, uh, Quinn. Okay. We, of course, we lost Gregory. And, uh, uh we don't know how it's going to turn out for us when we got, we get Crawford back. We're going to be in good shape because he's always been good stopping the run. All right. We have also uh, Darian Thomas, who, is, who was with us before, but they re-signed him as a safety. And uh, that's a good thing because we, we need safeties, of course, you know. And uh, even though people didn't, a lot of Cowboy fans didn't really like, uh, like Jeff Heath. A lot of Cowboys did not like Jeff Heath. But you know what? Jeff Heath was pretty solid. But uh, that's where, in fact, he's always led the Cowboys in, in, in interceptions the last several years. Think about that for a second. He was at least able to be the one that handled handle the ball and keep it keep it in his hands without dropping it where everybody else couldn't couldn't hold on to shit. All right, Maurice Can Canadi, uh, a cornerback. They they signed. Okay, now we, he's another one. We don't know what he can do, but we got somebody we can try to work with and prove. It's important that we do these things. Okay, we got also number six. We got Kai Forbath, kicker. He kicked. He kicked the shit out of uh, Maher. He kicked his ass out of out of Dallas, bro. So he shouldn't have been there. Jason Garrett did not get rid of Maher until the Eagles were close enough to retake first place. Got back into the divisional fight and retake first place. Just a week or two before that happened, that's when he finally got rid of Maher. This bastard kept him. Why he was ruining games for us. At least at least three, two games. I say three. That he freaking lost on his own for the Cowboys. Because of him. Everything got changed because of him. And got my and Garrett kept kept using him. Just just horrible. But Forbath came in there and he never missed a kick. I wanna say it again. Forbath came in, took that bastard's place, and never missed a kick that this last season. So hopefully we can we can we can continue uh keeping him. And he has also uh, someone else who's going to give him a, um, um, the person who's going to give him a, uh, um, uh, some challenge. And uh, that's okay. I want to keep forth that. He, he deserves a chance. Number seven is Joe Thomas. Very surprising. I'm going to do a video on Joe Thomas. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that real quick. Um, next next uh, video. Joe Thomas 
is a surprise. I thought he was going to go. I thought he was gone, in fact, after the last season. He, the injury he had. That's another injury I talked about that Joe Thomas was not there. Okay? He was gone. Now, he re-signed with the Cowboys. Joe Thomas is back as a linebacker. And you could pluck him in any position in a linebacker. Okay? The guy was versatile. The guy was good. The guy knew how to hunt down the ball carrier. He was. He's a reason. One of the main reason why um, we stopped the run in 2018. Joe Thomas, bro. He was excellent. He's back with the Cowboys. Thank God they signed him. Resigned him. Joe Thomas is back. Okay, now number um, eight is Blake Bell. Blake Bell is going to be a great blocker for Ezekiel Elliott and uh, Pollard in our run game. Boost our run game up. But if the run game becomes ineffective then is it is it will it be it will it be Blake Bell or more so the other kid uh Dal Dalton Schultz I like the fact that we signed Blake Bell that's a good signing okay and uh he's got some he got some decent hands look what he did um 38 percent of the uh plays he did with uh, Kansas City last year he was in the in their, their, their offense that's good and of course he's, he's a great blocker matter of fact they call him Belldozer all right but Here's the thing. If I, it, it, it would be games. It's going to happen where games are going to a running game will be insignificantly to be used, or it will be insignificant in a game to stop. Will it be him still in there, or will it be Dalton Schultz? Dalton Schultz is a pretty decent blocker himself, though. But you know he couldn't overtake Blake Jarman. You see what I'm saying? So that's that's a good question to ask about that. But we do have Blake Bell, and it's a good signing, and I'm happy about that. All right, so these are our signings we have right now for the for the Dallas Cowboys for veteran free agents that we needed desperately for this team defensively. Of course, we're, we were okay offensively. Don't let them fool you. Congratulations to people like um, Darius. Darius just hit 10,000 subscribers. Congratulations to him. But he made comments about, you know, hey, hey, he got all this power, but he's still Dak Prescott, his quarterback. Well, listen, man, you keep forgetting that um, Aaron Rodgers was his quarterback. They didn't even make the playoffs his last two, three years. But he was a uh, oh, head coach, though. Not the, not the cast in the aspersions against, against McCarthy, but him, him and Aaron Rodgers did not like each other. They could not get along. They couldn't get their heads settled. Dak is a guy who works with you, which is why he wins, okay? What's my point, though? All right, so so with that, you know, uh, uh, forget that. It's a new, whole new era, not just for the fact that, that it, Garrett is gone, but a whole new era that Mike McCarthy is within the Dallas Cowboys out of Green Bay. And we know the man's record speaks for itself. It's, it's, it speaks enough for, uh, volume. So so the point is, is that though he didn't get along with his quarterback that he helped to develop now. He did help to develop because he used to be the quarterback coach. Then he became a, 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 a OC and then he became a head coach. Aaron Rodgers became a good quarterback. You understand? Come on. We got Dak Prescott. He's 30, he's 26 years old. He works with good everybody. Tony Romo, he worked well with. Even with even with even with um Sanchez. Worked well with him. And Sanchez had a lot of, he may not have through the ball, but he had a lot of, a lot of knowledge. And he and that, he helped that with that too. Of course, you had uh, 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 other quarterback coaches. Wade was there before he died. And also, um, uh, what's his name? The guy who came from Detroit. I, I, his name um, escapes me. He was Dak Prescott's uh, quarterback coach last season. And the improvement, the improvement of Dak Prescott was, was surmountable. You can see that in his throwing. You can see that in his in, in his in his in his play action. Everything. So with that, you know, I'm happy for that. But here's the thing, though. Um, uh, you'll see McCarthy, I think, having an effect on Dak Prescott as well, because I know he knows how to game play. I know he knows how to call for situations and where that he's not going to worry about not wanting to lose the game. He's going to worry about trying to win the damn thing. You knew that already. So all of y'all knew that already. Anyway. I want to say something to you, Eagle fans, too. You know, you're screaming and crying about not having receivers, which is new. I already gave my opinion why that's a lie. The same core, basically, core you had was a core that won the Super Bowl for Nick Foles. And the following season, Nick Foles got them back into the the postseason with three games in a row. Still, they needed help by Minnesota, by Minnesota losing that year in 2018. But at least he had gave them a chance with three games wins in a row, right? And they won their first postseason game when it, it, that that year. But it wasn't Carson Wentz that did it. Okay, my point being here is that 
Your office hurts y'all more than your players do. Why? Because while you were calling Harry Roseman a genius, picked J.J. Ortega Whiteside, or Sega Whiteside rather, over D.K. Metcalf. Okay? They picked him over him thinking that he's going to, that D.K. Metcalf is going to be a bust. Metcalf had 900 yards receiving. He had seven touchdowns. And he had 58 receptions. Okay? With a catch rate of about 54, 58%. I forgot it was, but anything over 50% for a, for a wide receiver is decent. Not great or good, but decent. You can say that in terms of about 60% would be great, would be good. Okay? However, that's good for a wide receiver. The thing is that the note here is that with 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 uh, Russell Wilson in the, in the Seattle Seahawks, when DK Metcalf he had like thirty nine first down catches and fifty eight receptions. I mean, that's not a bust. That's pretty damn good. Then you got JJ or Sega Whiteside, who only had like hundred and sixty nine yards receiving. 10 receptions? And that's not all his fault either, though. I'm going to be honest with you. Your quarterback keep looking for their tight ends and running get, and running backs. You understand? Know the reason why he didn't have a, re a re wide receiver with, with 500 yards receiving or more was because he's not looking for them. He's gotten worse each year. He's been in the quarterback for the damn Eagles. He's not looking for them. And I suspect that maybe even next year, you're going to have maybe a couple of more uh, wide receivers who have less than 500 yards receptions. Michael Gallup, in this year, his, his, his uh, rookie year, he had, I don't know, I forgot what it was. Um, let me see if I got it here. Yeah, I do got it here. Man, what's wrong with me? Michael Gallup had like, um, not his rookie year, but he had like, um, in his second year, he had 1,107 yards reception. Receiving, okay? 66 receptions. And 50 of those 66 receptions were first downs for Dak Prescott. You see, Dak's, the idea for the quarterback, as y'all already forgotten, is that it's to look for open receiver. Okay, Michael Gallup slower than, slower than all the receivers we got on our team. He's the slowest one. I think Blake Jarwin's faster than he is. <laughs> and yet he's got 50 first downs. Okay? 50 first downs. It's about getting open, buddy. It's about getting open and finding the open receiver. That's what it is. So stop talking that crap that Prescott can't do this or that. You're, you got problems with your own quarterback. You better... <laughs> and you see Michael Gallup here. He has six touchdowns. Okay, his catch rate was 58 percent. No, fifty, yeah, almost fifty-eight and a half percent. It's 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 decent. It's, it's decent. Decent. I accept that's pretty good. Now this is decent. And he missed and he missed two games. And so you guys talking about some damn uh don't have no receivers to throw to when you have the Super Bowl receivers, you still have them in your squad. Now that Aguilar is gone, he was still there. Now he's gone now. And you have also um, Alshon Jeffrey, who may go. You know, him and Carson Wentz don't get along. All right? But um, in Dallas, Dak's the boss. Clear boss. All right? So he's not questioned by his players. But anyway, that's all I wanted to say. So with that, you guys just have a good day. Uh, like I said, I'm going to make a video possibly tomorrow, uh, tomorrow about Joe Thomas. Because I, I really did like his play. He was very excellent. And he was a, one of the main proponents why that's, we stopped the run in 2018. Okay? Peace.